Hello there and welcome to episode six of One on One on the Bottom Line podcast. I'm Jimmy Finizzi. I hope that you're doing well. So once again, for this particular episode, not going to waste any time. Our next guest is truly an awesome, awesome musician. She is known as Violet Orlandi. She is known for covering heavy metal, some dark music, hard rock, um, classic rock, you, you name it. She will cover it. She'll even cover Evanescence, who she's been compared to a lot <laughs> more specifically to uh, Amy Lee. She's been called Amy Lee 2.0. We'll definitely get into that conversation, but, but Violet is an amazingly talented musician. I can't thank her enough for coming on. This is going to be a fascinating conversation. So with that being said, please sit back, relax, have a good time and enjoy this exclusive one-on-one interview with Violet Orlandi. Enjoy. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, if you know who this woman is right now, she probably needs no introduction to you. But in case you're not familiar, she is famous on YouTube. She covers everything in the rock genre. Heavy heavy metal, hard rock, goth, dark, you name it. She will cover it and she will post a new video every single Sunday on YouTube. You can find her on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can also follow her on Follow her on Spotify as well as go support her on her Patreon, just, just like you can do for, for us, by the way. More on that in a little bit. But ladies and gentlemen, this woman needs no introduction. I give you the one and only Violet Orlandi. Violet, how the heck are you? Thank you so much for doing this. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I, I love your podcast, so I'm oh. really happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much for the support. I truly appreciate it. And Thank you again for agreeing to do this it really does mean a lot so we're not going to waste any more time here and get started so again i have to reiterate because i know people are probably sick and tired of me answering the question about origin stories but damn it i don't care so i'm going to ask it anyway because i am always fascinated by origin stories so with that being said how did you first get into the music business I guess I fell in love with music kind of late compared to some people. I was 13 when I was first introduced to metal and industrial and the world of YouTube and music videos. And I was hooked instantly. And then I very quickly decided to pick up the guitar and start learning. And it took many years for me to actually decide to pursue any sort of career related to music. I wanted to be so many other things because I was convinced that it it was not possible to become a musician unless you wanted to become a teacher. And I'm a very terrible, I'm a terrible teacher. (laughs) Oh, come on. Come on. I'm I'm sure that's not true. No, no, it's it's true. I'm a shit teacher. (laughs) I I cannot teach you. If you don't understand the first time, I don't know how how else to tell you. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, listen, I mean, listen, you, you and me both in, in all fairness, I would be a terrible teacher too. Unless you're coming to me to learn about how to do this podcast, for example, I can't help you with guitar. I can't help you <laughs> with drumming. I can't help you with anything else other than this. So sorry, I can't help you in any other department. But I forgot to mention this before when I was introducing you, and I apologize for not doing so. You are from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And from what I do understand, certain parts of the world have different cultures when it comes to um, how they listen to music. So with that being said, as a younger Violet Orlandi, the world, what was it like living in, I know you still live in Brazil right now, but growing up um, in Brazil, listening to that sort of culture of music, what was that like for you when you first got, when you first got into it? So I was always a, a very introverted kid. I was never in, I would never go to bars or gigs, shows. I, that was not my thing. So the way that I discovered music was through friends. And at, a, at that age, I was already like kind of singing, like jamming whenever right. my friends would get together and they would have their own bands. And I would just come and say, oh, I, like, I can't sing a song. <laughs> and then at that age, when I was first introduced to metal, 
I think the first band, like metal band that I was ever introduced to was Halloween. And Ooh, I got into wow. like metal ballads and very quickly I found Marilyn Manson and that world of music videos that were very visually appealing to me. And then I was like, whoa, this is it. <laughs> so it was always very like small groups of friends for me and getting together, finding, eventually finding my own band through, uh, thanks to the internet <laughs> and getting together every fucking week and rehearsing and listening to songs and going on MSN and sharing music nonstop. And yeah, I mean, to this day, I, I hate going to shows <laughs> 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 unless I just love the artist so much that it would be life changing to see them live. Right. I'm like, heck yeah, I'll go. But yeah, yeah I mean, it's it, all I, online. Yeah, I, I, I don't mean to cut you off. I apologize. I was going to say, unless that sort of artist is like one of your your biggest musical inspirations, I totally understand that, which actually leads me into my next question here. Was there any like metal band or metal artist that was a big influence on you that made you get into music and made you want to start um, uploading covers on YouTube? I think those are two different people. The, the, the metal artist that got me to where I am, I, I'd say is Marilyn Manson. Definitely. Okay. Okay. I, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even begin to explain my, the way that his music has shaped me so many through so many years. And I, it's very special to me because he is one of the very few artists that I found myself. Right. It was not recommended to me by anyone. I just found on the internet and I got into his stuff myself. And then what got me into making YouTube videos, it was something very specific. There was this girl back in the day called Kate McGill. She would upload mm -hmm. videos very regularly on the internet and she had a pretty decent fan base at the time. It was very, right. it was more like pop, like Adele or Florence and the Machine, I don't know. But I just loved her. She seemed so nice. <laughs> And she was doing so, so many videos and I would watch her and I'm like, I, I can't do that. <laughs> so when, I, I think my first YouTube video, I, I posted when I was 15 mm. and I, I posted like, I don't know, three or four uh, covers at okay. that time. I, I wasn't taking it seriously at all. It was only my last year of university that I decided on like, this is it. I'm going to post every week and I'm going to dedicate all of my time to this. Well, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely worked out for you. We'll get more into that in a, in a little bit, but I actually want to, uh, ask you, uh, I forgive me if this is going to be, uh, too personal of a question here, but I did ask Audra Miller first to 11 this when I had her on for this series. And I want to ask you the same thing because my co-hosts, Neil and Austin and myself have always been a proponent of the following statement. If you are a woman who wants to be in the music business, in the sports business, in the art industry, wherever, if you're a woman and you have a passion and if you want to go for it, do it. There is nothing, nothing that should stop you regardless of what anybody says. And we've always been a big proponent of that for many years. So with that being said, and let's be honest here, most of the music industry, not all, but most of the music industry is male dominated. So with that being said, for you personally, what does it mean for you to have such great success that you are having as a woman in the music industry? And what message would you give to the little girls who may be watching this right now who want to do this for a living? Well, first of all, woman or man, if you want to do anything, just put your mind to it and see what happens. There's no mm. reason why there's going to, there are going to be obstacles in the way always, no matter mm. the case. And in some ways that's what makes it special because if it would be so easy to earn something, it would not be special. <laughs> There are so many injustices in the world and life is difficult for everyone. Mm. You just have to be up for the challenge, no matter the case. And that's going to inspire so many other people 
that you won't even believe. Now, when it comes to the music industry and the fact that it's more, uh, it's dominated by men, it is tricky because at the same time that it is very intimidating for you to insert yourself in this community where you are the minority, Mm -hmm. at the same time, it makes you a little bit more special right? (laughs) because there are so few of you. Maybe nowadays that's not the case anymore. I was, I was talking about this with Dan Vask the other day, by the way. We were trying to name all of the metal musicians on YouTube, and most of them are women. <laughs> mm. And this was a funny realization to me because I always thought of myself as being the minority always. Right. I'm like, well, oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> all of the singers in metal on YouTube are mostly female. Mm. and that's kind of cool that's that's a fair point and that's kind of that's awesome and I mean I am I'm friends with a whole array of different people on YouTube men and female but the fact that I was able to with the help of other people create this awesome little community that was mostly female it is very comforting the same way I think for men is more comforting for them to be together (laughs) it's all online at this point especially with covid we're not we're not able to tour yet and i'm sure that when we do tour it's going to switch and then the majority of people involved in the tour are going to be men but that's that's absolutely fine i mean we're different but i have no doubt that everyone can be extremely professional and welcoming and I don't think that would be an issue. (laughs) I really like that answer a lot. That's very, very well put. We're talking to Violet Orlandi here on the Bottom Line Podcast for the one-on-one series. Let's talk about your YouTube career because it really, you really have been taking off like crazy. You joined on February 12th, 2012. And since then, you are close to 1 million subscribers at the time of this recording, 979K and counting and over 125 million views on YouTube. What does all of that mean to you personally? It's just so gratifying to see hard work actually amounting to something. (laughs) And I know that my journey on YouTube, I don't know, it, it depends who you ask. Some people find success really fast. They post one video and then they go viral. For me, it was very much the opposite. It was a very slow build, very steady Mm. every day. And I think I like that more. Maybe it's because I, I, that's the only thing I have, (laughs) but I think I like that more because it made, it really solidified in my mind that um, being consistent actually amounts to something. Mm. at least it amounts to consistent growth for me, at least, I don't know for other people, but now to see, to see my career so far from the ground where it started, there is such a a sense of pride and joy that comes with that. Well, like I said before, it really has, it really has worked wonders for you because you have a lot, a lot of fans out there who really do, support you. Now, I was looking at some of your covers here, and the one that I'm finding has been the most popular is Down With The Sickness by Disturbed. And I did notice that, and you and you have pointed this out on the record in one of your uh, most recent videos. I think it was, um, I think it was the one where you were uh, reacting to uh, hate comments, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> that <laughs> Disturbed themselves actually really really liked the cover disturbed (laughs) liked the video (laughs) exactly so i mean to be to be recognized by let's face it a pretty kind of a big deal band who's been in the metal industry for 20 plus years that has to be kind of a big deal to you right hell yeah i mean every time i i can count how many times that's happened to me so it's still it's still very surreal to me whenever it does happen, but (laughs) 
of course, it's, it's just so cool to at least have a seal of approval right next to your work. Not that's necessarily uh, necessary, but it's <laughs> right, just so right. amazing and disturbed. I, I don't know who it was. I don't know if it was David himself or someone else in the band or in the managing side of social media. I don't know who liked the video, who shared it, who commented. Right. But Disturbed has a reputation of being really fucking cool. Oh yeah, big time. They're they're amazing. They're so they're so sweet. Have have you have you seen Disturbed live before? No, I haven't. Mm, oh man, that that I'm I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, if you ever get that chance, I've seen them twice. They are on. Unbelievable. Probably one of the best live bands I have ever heard in my life. They sound exactly like themselves, which is exactly what you want from a live band. So I really appreciate that, that they are not willing to change who they are. So if you ever get that chance, and this goes for my audience out there as well, if you have a chance to see Disturbed live, I promise you it'll be worth your time. I promise you. Yeah. I would totally see them live if I had the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So you are known for covers on YouTube, obviously. And from some of the comments that I've been seeing is that you are often compared to a little, little known singer known as Amy Lee. Now, I know that you've been hearing this a lot. So <laughs> I guess my question in regards to that is, does it bother you at all to be compared to Amy Lee? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were to hear first, folks. Stop, <laughs> stop comparing her to Amy Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, it's not to say that I am ungrateful because she is an amazing vocalist oh, and musician oh all around. And she is an influence of mine, definitely, but not that right. big. Not that big that I that I strive to sound like her at all. Right, right. So when those comments started pop started popping up, and they never stopped. At first, I was concerned. I'm like, God damn it! it I mean, it does not. Ma it doesn't matter what I sang. I tried to sing. Some there was a phase that I was forcing myself to change the way I sing just so I wouldn't sound like her, and it didn't stop the comments. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine told me that it was just as bad for me to purposefully sound not like her just because people were comparing me to her so much. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> people, people say all the time, if I close my eyes, I can't even tell the difference. And I'm like, so you're not really listening. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you, you, you're not. Clearly. <laughs> I mean, literally, literally, if you open your eyes and listen, look. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to compare you to Amy Lee, but your voice is very, very distinct. And it is beautiful, by the way. You do have a very beautiful voice. I just want to state that for the record. And I, I truly, truly mean that. But the same thing goes for the same thing goes for Amy Lee. And I, I have heard both of you back to back. I had to listen for myself and I'm saying I can kind of see it a little bit. But at the same time, I'm not going to be one of those guys that's constantly commenting every five videos being like oh go check this woman out she's amy lee 2.0 i'm like no like if, if she she clearly it clearly bothers her so what why, why am i gonna do it like like just, I mean, just stop it already i mean listen if you truly believe that say whatever you want <laughs> i'm just gonna I, I can't do anything about it so i'm just gonna have fun with it at least Oh, there you go. <laughs> but it's it's like people who tell me that I look like now that I have the blonde streaks, I look like Rogue from X Men. Oh, Kinda. I mean, but you can tell the difference, right? <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly the point I was trying to get across. Someone who, someone else who finally gets it. Thank you. <laughs> Man. Uh, yeah. Just, just, just people in general. Can, can you really blame them though? In all honesty. <laughs> We're talking to Violet Orlandi on the Bottom Line Podcast. So I know, like I said before, you're obviously famous for your covers on YouTube. However, you also do have original music out. You do have an album called High Priest Daughter. It is out right now. You can go stream it on Spotify. You can buy it on iTunes or listen to it wherever you listen to music. And I know that 
you were th- this is kind of a big deal to you considering the fact that you were writing original music for a while but now that it's finally out there for the world to hear what does that mean to you it's going to be kind of a an underwhelming answer because i despise that album <laughs> ooh ooh <laughs> ooh boy <laughs> yikes i hate it i mean i do love the songs that are included in the album and i mean the the lyrics and the compositions right because they're very close to my heart i wrote them all of them are in some way related to my mom's death a while mm-hmm. back and but i when i wrote them i had no intention of releasing them right at least not to that point and then I got myself into a very shitty situation, a very uh, abusive contract. And the way out of that situation was release an album and you're good. And I'm like, cool. I have 10 songs. I recorded everything myself in this fucking bedroom in three weeks. I delivered mm. everything to the to the mix engineer and the, the mastering engineer. I'm like, do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I I use my iPhone, the front camera to take the picture for the the album art. And I'm like, this is the album. Let me out of the contract right now. And that was that. It's that the is... price that I that I paid, and I I take full responsibility for my mistakes. But it's whatever. <laughs> that <laughs> that is. That is actually, I'm not going to lie, That that's pretty, pretty shocking because I'm not going to lie to you. I actually really enjoy the album. I personally think it's really, really good. I, I love that you, I love that you poured your heart out on every single song. And I think that's what, what more of the world needs to see is that you need to see these people who just, you can hear the passion in their work. And I definitely I definitely hear that in this album. By the way, I'm I'm very sorry for for the loss of your mom. I know how how difficult that must be for you. But I I just love like the passion that you have for your covers and for doing original music. Passion for music started way before YouTube for me. Right. YouTube became just a because wh- when I realized during my last year of university, I realized that I was going to mm-hmm. graduate and all of a sudden I wasn't going to have all of these professors requiring me to do the work, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's something that drives me a lot. I need mm-hmm. a, a figure of authority in my life for me to, to present something to, you know? <laughs> right. That's what drives me. Call that pressure or whatever. So when I realized that, I was terrified that as soon as I graduated, I was never going to pick up the guitar again and write another song. Mm-hmm. So I told myself, I'm, I need a project. So I'm going to start posting videos every fucking week on YouTube and let's see what happens. And I'm going to keep doing that even after I graduate. And the schedule became this authority in my life that I need to follow through with it. At the beginning, it was very, it was like a chore. Like I would wake up earlier on Sunday. I would scroll through the top charts, pick out a song at random and play it on in front of the camera. And that was that. And slowly over time, I became more and more confident in, in my ability to just have more fun with it because <laughs> right. it becomes, it gets really boring really fast. And then now I dress up like a demon, like a vampire. <laughs> I, I do whatever song I want and whatever style I want. And it's way more fun like that. And I think that's where the passion started coming in for me. <laughs> I Hey, I totally get what whatever whatever drives you to have fun with what you're doing, go for it. I ain't got to stop you. Now, let's actually have a little bit of fun here because the one pattern that I have noticed in most of your covers is that you do have a ton of collaborations with... First to eleven, mainly Audra, um, Halicine, and Lauren Babic. Tell me a little more about your friendship with each of them and how you met. How you met everybody? Well, way back in the day, I'm pretty sure I tried to contact Halicine. Okay, but I, I was so small. I don't even. I don't even think they got back to me. I, I don't know what what happened with that. But then the more I grew. I think then they contacted me about a collab and that was my first contact 
with them actually. And okay. it went really well. It was such a pleasure working with them. And then shortly after that, Addie had this idea of starting the trilogy, like three singers doing one song. And at the time it was System of a Down. And she came to me with the idea and she told me that she wanted to invite Lauren Babick, who I knew already. And I've always wanted to work with her. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was after that first video, I think it was Chop Suey that we did first. Ooh. It did so well. And it was just so fun, such a fun little concept that we just kept in contact. And then I collabed with Lauren and Holocene again. And we just started working so much together in so many meetings and chats that we, that's the community we formed. And it's awesome because <laughs> we work so well together and they're lovely, lovely people. And it's so cool Aww. to work with them. We're working together as much as we can. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely try as much as you can. How, to, how did you, how did you come across some um, Audra first to 11? First to 11, I think I found out about them later, but I think be, after I started collabing with, uh, with Addie and Lauren, mm -hmm. I think first to 11's videos started being recommended to me and I, and I knew that they existed and right. then later on, I'm not even sure what came first. I think Addie <laughs> wanted to do another collab for Bohemian Rhapsody. And then okay. First to 11 wanted to do the Somebody to Love. And again, like those are such uh, intense collaborations that we're constantly in contact. So now I like how there is this a sense of community and camaraderie that we always, always support each other, even if we're doing things independently from each other. Right. Really cool to see that even because YouTube can be so isolating. Mm -hmm. So it's awesome. I try to collab with as many people as possible because I think something is lacking in my career, which is other people. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play with other people. And if it's not going to be in person, it's going to be online. <laughs> right. <laughs> there we I go. I mean, look, people can be cruel in this world, but if you're working with people you love, I mean, what's, what's not to like? So I, I totally can, yeah. I totally can relate to that. So that that's, that's really, really fascinating stuff. Now, unfortunately, our time is coming to a close, but before we, uh, before we wrap things up, do you have a message to any of your fans who may be uh, watching this right now? I just hope that even though sometimes I, I tend to downplay what I do just because it is so fun. And I was going to say easy, but it's not necessarily easy. Mm -hmm. But I have this tendency of down, downplaying what I do just because I, I don't know. I think it, it doesn't have that much value to the world, which is my insecurity talking. I know, but I just. That's all right. I just, I can only hope that whatever I'm doing adds something positive to to people if you want to listen i i'm glad you want to listen because i'm always going to be here giving you stuff to listen <laughs> so i can only hope that brings you some i don't know some comfort some joy some company some laughs <laughs>, <laughs> well definitely definitely laughs with uh, the most recent video you had and I, I i personally really really enjoyed that that was absolutely really really funny stuff what you did and i i, I just love i love that you did that though because it, it just shows that you just have to be prepared for anything if you're going to do something like this so the fact that you did what you did reacting to hate comments and just not letting it get to you that much i just i feel that shows a lot of strength and it shows that you can't always let others get to you. And I think that's the important message that you have to, you have to interpret when it comes to doing anything in life. So I really, really love that answer from you. And, you know, based on the success that you've had, it definitely, uh, it definitely speaks volumes. Cause like I said, you definitely have a lot of fans out there, including myself that will, that will continue to support you all the way through. But unfortunately, our time has ended. But wow, what a fascinating and fun conversation this was. Violet, I cannot thank you enough for 
coming on and agreeing to do this. I truly, truly appreciate this. And like I said to everybody, you are always welcome back anytime. Thank you so, so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? The pleasure is all mine. She <laughs> is Violet Orlandi. Please be sure to go follow her on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Go follow her on Spotify as well as subscribe to her Patreon and subscribe to her YouTube channel. There will be a new video from her every single Sunday. I'm Jimmy Finizzi. This is the Bottom Line Podcast. Thank you for tuning into the one-on-one -on -one series and we'll see you next time. Peace and take care. Oh,